welcome back. I am coming today to talk to you all about alternate ways to cook, to cook your food in case you don't have power and you have an electric stove like me, or for some reason your gas stove doesn't work or just whatever reason that you can't use your everyday normal way that you cook your food. We're going to talk about some alternative ways that Brent and I have for the just in case we can't cook. Brent's home with me today and he's agreed to help me help me with this video. So um, I'm trying to think of times in the past when I couldn't cook in my kitchen on my stove like I do every day. We had a tornado has gone through and taken out power lines. We were without power for, I don't remember, a day or two. I can't remember for sure, but anyway, I couldn't cook. So, and I was right in the middle of fixing supper when the tornado went through and we lost our power. Um, that was one time that I couldn't cook for quite a while actually. And then there's the times in the winter when we get ice storms and we don't have power and then we can't cook because I have an electric stove. So I've had to be clever and think of ways, actually Brent's been clever too because he's thought of some of these ways himself. Um, so I wanna show you my alternate cooking resources like it. And I have several of cast iron pots and pans and a griddle and some skillets. You could cook over an open fire with cast iron cookware and, and it, it doesn't damage it at all. Whereas if you would put your um, aluminum or stainless steel pots and pans on an open fire, it's gonna, it's gonna you know, damage your pots and pans. So be doing that. Brent's gonna help me get our stuff out and show you guys how we cook when we can't cook inside. So I'll see you in a minute. Here's our camp stove Brent got out. It's dirty, we just pulled it out of the building. We're gonna dust that up and he's gonna see if it lights, make sure it doesn't need any repairs, make sure, I know we have plenty of fuel cause we actually stock extra fuel. So you are putting fuel in. Coleman Camp Fuel it's called. So you have to pump up some air into the tank. I do need to learn because if you would ever not be home and I would need to use that, I have no clue what to do. So you pump it until it gets really tight and then you screw it down, right? Mm -hmm. I remember you doing that when we've been camping. I will video you doing this and then if I get in a bind and I'm home alone, I'll watch my own prepping video to know how to use my Coleman camp So. <laughs> The lighter that Brent has in his hand right there, I get those at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. So it's always, I always pick those up because it's, it's always good to have those on hand. Oh, it's not going to light, is it? it didn't, this didn't feel quite right when I was prepping. Okay. Maybe. This is why it's always good people to get your things out and just make sure that's part of prepping too. Because in the back of my mind, I thought that since I had the camp stove, we were good to go. But it needs some repair, I think. We found out that our Coleman stove is no longer serviceable. So it will need to be replaced. But we do have alternative ways of cooking. So you have a stand and a burner and a propane tank. You're working with gas, of course, so you want to be very careful. Uh, treat it with much respect. Uh, it can be your friend or it can hurt you, so uh, do be careful. Uh, I've already connected the tank to the burner just a hint when you're making the connection so you don't get the threads crossed and rain. You can just hold uh, the connection up to it, turn it in the opposite direction, and then when it locks, then turn it and tighten it. That'll keep you from getting your threads crossed. Okay. I'm gonna turn on the gas now. Yeah, look how easy that is, guys. See all the kitty cat toys in the background? That's Amy and Shadow's, whoops, there's my hand. Amy and Shadow's little playground here too, so. Okay. And then this will provide more heat. Because uh, 
it will get hot. It will provide like a more even kind of heat, won't it? Right, It'll right. distribute the heat evenly. Okay. Right. And so you could you could set a Dutch oven on there. Um, a skillet. A skillet. You could do anything you want to you to cook do anything, on there, right? Really? Yeah. Okay. So there's a burner to use. A nice little setup. And then if you're having a family gathering and if you want to fry if you want to fry fish or if you want to you know fry chicken um uh, it, it's really good for that we've done that before well. haven't we for father's day we've mm -hmm. had fish fries so we are on a prepping mission today where we've got our garden hose all wound up and ready to put away for winter and we've checked on our alternate sources of heat for our prepping and now we're checking our alternate sources of cooking cooking resources and, and so outdoor, yeah an outdoor grill is another great way to uh, yep there's your grill uh, you can use charcoal or i have a wood burning box on this that i use for smoking meat uh, you could uh, just put your whole meal in um, and cook at the same time um, in a in a crisis situation you're going to be cooking simpler mm -hmm. and so you may be combining things and uh, you might make like different stews or, or soups that combine your protein mm -hmm. and your vegetables. Um, so one of our favorite things to do is to cook over a fire and we have a tripod for that. Oh yeah, and, or like our campfires, yeah. yeah. And so these just set up like a tripod uh, mm -hmm. over a fire and then you can put uh, a cast iron uh, you can suspend the cast iron skillet, which is what we do, and cook. We uh, use a Dutch oven, our cast iron Dutch oven. Right, it's a cast iron Dutch oven. Yeah. And uh, you can cook soup, you can cook uh, beans. Ham and beans we've cooked. Right, uh, chili. Chili. Uh, anything that you like cooked over fire mm -hmm. uh, is especially good. Uh, oh, it gives it a really easy. good flavor. Mm -hmm. And. That would be good, yeah. I forgot about that. I have a lot of different cast iron. I've got the Dutch oven and the skillets. We ha also have the cast iron grate that would go over the campfire that you could put a skillet to cook breakfast or um, any kind of, sorry, any kind of, you know, things you would want to cook in a skillet too. And, you know, if, if worse comes to worst, you could eat food. Right out of the can, right can't we? Right out of the can. Um, mm -hmm. It's not heated. Um, right. So in an emergency uh, of course you want to be very careful uh, keep your food safe uh, keep your your, mm -hmm. your family safe because you don't want to create more problems by getting sick because or of, hurt uh, or hurt because uh, of something that you were doing to try to take care of your family right first of all think of being safe right so those are our cooking resources, our propane tank, the smoker and the grill, and then the cast iron over the campfire. Mm -hmm. And those would all three work. Well, I'm sorry our camp stove bit the dust. That thing was, I was talking about how old it was though. And then sure enough, it, it just wouldn't light. And then it's, it was, it just didn't seem like it was gonna be safe, so. We'll probably put that on our list of things to replace because they aren't terribly expensive. Yeah, and so handy to have, oh my goodness. We've, we've cooked everything on that, that thing. So yeah, and the fuel, the fuel lasts a long time. Mm -mm. Yeah. All right. So thanks for helping me, Brent. It's a beautiful fall day. It's a good day to do this. Get all of our stuff out and see what still works. <laughs> thanks for watching guys. We'll see you later.